In the quest for sustainability, the telecommunications industry plays a pivotal role. Here to tell us more about that is Brad Schlagenhoff, Director of Sustainability Marketing at HPE, and Steve Dinkins, the 5G Wireless Core Segment Manager at Intel. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Appreciate it, thanks. Brad, I'll start with you. Sure. With the climate crisis on everybody's mind, what is HPE doing to help with sustainability? Yeah, I mean, really, we weave it into everything we do. It's part of our purpose to advance the way people live and work. Um, and so, you know, with our, it really everything that we do starts with our net zero target, which is pretty aggressive. We're one of only two global IT companies that have set a target of 2040 um, to be net zero. And so with that, of course, comes along, you know, looking at our suppliers, you know, scope free emissions, everything to everything we do, you know, from a uh, product perspective, helping our customers, um, building new solutions that are more energy efficient and just really trying to you know, help our customers make better choices and, and do the right things themselves. And Steve, what is Intel's approach to sustainability? I mean, it's really like a three-pronged approach, right? So first, we have to reduce our carbon footprint in manufacturing and our supply chain partnerships, right? So as we look at these very deep supply chain, supply chain partnerships, it's, it's actually very complicated. It's a lot of work, but it can pay huge dividends um, we have to work on manufacturing, reducing emissions ourselves, and then we expand to help our partners um, with, their, with their sustainability goals. Second, we must design in sustainability, right? So we make our products, we also have to design our products to be sustainable, right? So it's, we've done huge things, performance gains, like we look at this server here, Gen 5 Xeon, HP DL380. Everyone talks about performance, it's fantastic, but we also must remember that we have power constraints, both in the racks, yeah both in the data centers, right? So every product we design must be more power efficient than the last products that came before it, right? And finally, it's all about the ecosystem, right? We have to work together for the sustainability solutions, uh, looking at standards, right? So everything we do takes an army, right? These are big, massive problems we have to solve and we all must work together to solve it. And thankfully, uh, HP has been by our side to do that. You know, Steve mentioned uh, power. Brad, is there a tool that would help telcos understand where their power consumption is coming from? Yeah, yeah. As part of our HPE uh, GreenLake platform, we have a, we've introduced a new solution called the uh, HPE uh, GreenLake Sustainability Insight Center. And what that does is actually looks across your entire estate um, to gauge both your carbon footprint, understand your energy usage, and really kind of the impacts on the environment overall and help you make better choices, you know, based upon that data. We found that the hardest thing to do is kind of gather that data to understand, you know, those kind of elements and then again, try to make better choices, you know, through that process. Right, once we've identified where those servers are that are causing the problem, what do we do about it? Yeah, yeah, Steve mentioned this server here we're looking at right now, which is, which is our, our ProLiant Gen 11 server, which uh, really provides up to 80% more efficiency than previous generations. And, you know, what we want to do is try and upgrade that. That's really basically, you know, like condensing, you know, 10 or 11 servers into a single server. So, you know, what we can do is, is provide better utilization, a more efficient server overall, and kind of make those trade outs. Um, additionally, you know, what we want to do is make sure that these things don't end up in landfills, right? So we have a pretty good uh, yeah, upcycling program. You know, we try and invoke the kind of this IT smarter lifecycle approach to things where we can, you know, reuse this equipment, if, if not disassemble them, you know, uh, recycle the materials. And um, so, you know, those are the things we do. And we want to advise customers to, to, to do the right, right choices as well. The other thing I would say is um, that a lot of efficiencies come from understanding and identifying where is the most efficient place to run that workload? Sometimes it, you know, it could be in the cloud. Sometimes it's on-prem you know, in a server environment. But just by making those kind of choices, we actually end up saving you know, a lot of energy that way as well. And how is Intel working towards sustainability and reduced power consumption? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we talked earlier about manufacturing and design, right? Two very important things. That one of the challenges we have is that we deploy these servers, we push the power button, and unfortunately, more often than not, they stay powered on at max power 24 seven, right? So we have this, we take all these steps leading up to it, but yet we're not in a sustainability mindset once the servers are actually running, right? We call it runtime power. So yeah. one of our big investment areas now is how to reduce the actual runtime power when these servers are in data centers. So we've created a piece of software that we're working on our ecosystem partners with called Intel Infrastructure Power Manager. 
and we hope that it solves the problem and helps us use the power management capabilities that exist on the platform so that we only use power when we need it and not just on and off on a server, right? So that's really something that we're looking at. We're proud of working with HP on bringing to the market uh, on their servers. And that's a real important point because we've, we've found that, right, that, that the most, uh, you know, consuming part of that life cycle is that use phase, right? Where things are just always running. And, and if you can kind of hone that in, you're gonna make the biggest impact on your carbon footprint. So Steve, how does the IPM work to really manage those workloads? Yeah, it, it really is based on the premise that the demands on a CPU or demands on a server is very cyclical, right? No server in the world gets deployed where it's just, you have to max it all the time from a throughput standpoint, right? There's, yeah, there's yeah. reserve cores, uh, it's 2 a.m., people are sleeping, right? So the concept is simple, that we have the piece of software that uses power management capabilities that exist today on a platform, and frankly, they existed for a while with just underutilizing them, right? Sure. But it uses the software efficiently and, and safely, I would say, matches the throughput demands of the CPU to actual power consumption, right? So when the demands on the CPU are low, we drop the frequencies, right? We go into low power states when the demand raises, we raise them back up. So it's really matching what the demand of the server is versus just having it on full speed all the time, right? So we're really excited about getting this in the network. Uh, we've seen savings of 30 to 40% in some of the trials we've done with our partners. HP's done a fantastic job of enabling all the BIOS hooks so that it's very easy for our customers to consume. So this is something that we expect to see live on tel telco networks uh, sometime this year. Well, Brad, Steve, thank you very much. It's very important work. Thanks for being with us today.